Hello students, hello specifically to my August Regents takers. I want to congratulate you for finishing up summer school because at this moment, I'm sure you're studying for your living environment Regents, which you're about to take in August. I applaud you for finding me here on YouTube, trying again for your Regents, and I have no doubt that you're going to pass this time around. So what I want to do before tomorrow's test, I want us to go over only the short responses of the regents that was given this past June, the June 14th, 2023 regents. I got a lot of feedback from so many of my subscribers. And one of the main things were, oh, Miss T, I... We're good with the multiple choice. Like the multiple choice is easy. Do the, do more short responses. So no problem. So I'm going to skip through the multiple choice because that, that's something that I was told that you guys had a good grasp on. And we're going to start with B2. B2 is the beginning of the short responses. As you can see here for number 44, you have to write down your response. Okay. So let me remind you of the things that you should absolutely always do for the test. You have to always read the directions. You have three hours for this test. So you need to use that time wisely and you have to read all of the directions because sometimes there's information, scientific, biological information that helps you with the question um, in the directions. Not always the case, but you just never know, okay? So let's get right to it. Let's get started. Let's study for our regions for tomorrow. You're going to do fantastic. Directions, 44 to number 55. For those questions that are multiple choice, record on a separate answer sheet the number of the choice that of those given best completes each statement or answers each question. For all other questions in this part, follow the directions given and record your answers in the space provided in this examination booklet. Meaning that you write your short responses where you have the, the lines and then any multiple choice, you put it in the answer sheet. Okay, let's keep going. Base your answer to questions 44 on the information and graph below and on your knowledge of biology. The graph shows the amount of oxygen, so I'm going to annotate oxygen, in Earth's atmosphere from 3,500 million years ago to present. Scientists can use this information to learn more about the evolution of different species. Okay. I want you to notice something 3,500 million years ago. Don't worry about, oh, shouldn't that be 3.5 million? What, why does it say 3,500? Don't worry about that. Let's take a look at the graph. So here we have years. This, these numbers here are years ago million years ago m y a million years ago so this is present right here 2023 okay and then this is going back to the past million years ago and then this over here is the amount of oxygen in the earth's atmosphere the higher up you go starting from here this is always zero the higher up you go the more oxygen you have in the atmosphere. Now, if you haven't seen my videos, my past videos before, I talk a lot more in depth about graphs, but the main thing that I want you to always do before you answer any question, try to understand the graph. Look at the graph and talk to yourself in your head, not out loud because you're test taking. Try to say the story in your head. For example, okay, in this graph, this is talking about the past from the present. The um, farthest it goes is 3,500 million years ago. And it's measuring the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. That's our story. So let's take a look at number 44. Identify, let me just bring this closer. Identify when during Earth's history, autotrophs, Let's annotate autotrophs, most likely first appeared. Support your answer using information from the graph. Okay, so 
what is an autotroph? What is that? So you should know that autotrophs make their own food. Do we make our own food? We absolutely do not. Yeah, we can go to the kitchen and make something or make a sandwich. But you yourself with your own body, do your cells make food for you? They do not. So don't think of yourself as an autotroph, okay? An organism that does make food for themselves are plants and some bacteria or unicellular organisms. That's about it. There's nothing else besides plants and some unicellular organisms like bacteria that make their own food. And what is that process called again? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. This is an example of what autotrophs do to make food for themselves. Do you remember the formula of photosynthesis? Okay, let's do the formula down here. And I love using the color green for this. So photosynthesis, basically the formula, what do you need to begin the process of photosynthesis? So you need carbon dioxide, you need water, and then of course you need the sunlight, okay? And that gives you, what do you think? Glucose. Glucose is a sugar for the plant. And it also gives you oxygen as a byproduct. This oxygen is what then um, is given off to the atmosphere. And this delicious sugar is given to the uh, autotroph, to the plant that's making its own food. Okay? So now let's answer the question when and of course annotate let's erase this because i want to remind you if you've been watching my other videos that you need to make sure you understand what is being asked so let's see again let's read the question again identify when during earth's history autotrophs most likely first appeared autotrophs organisms that make their own food and they um, give off oxygen into the atmosphere. That's what this is measuring. Oxygen in the atmosphere. Here, we have zero. No oxygen, no oxygen. Okay, here we go. Here, right here, is where we start seeing an increase in oxygen. Oxygen starts increasing beginning here. Okay, right here. So our number should be 2,500 million years ago. You have to make sure that you put the units, okay? So here's the answer. During, identify when during Earth's history, autotrophs most likely first appeared. Autotrophs first appeared around 2,500 million years ago because that is when oxygen, and you can write it like this or you can spell it out, oxygen began to increase. And yes, my handwriting sucks because I'm on an iPad. <laughs> excuses, excuses, right? And we're done. And that will absolutely give you the point. Okay. I'm not going to do this graph because I was told also by my cyber students that you guys are good with graphing. I noticed that they did not give you, they did not set this up for you. and You had to set it up for yourself. So what I suggest you do to practice graphs, I really suggest that you go online and you go look at past regions questions and you practice the graphs specifically. How do you enter something odd like this, right? So how do you 
make a scale for these kinds of numbers that are decimals and you would have to put them in your y-axis the year is easy the year is easy okay it's like 2000 2002 4 6 8 10 12 so then here would be um you would count how many spaces you need one two three four five six seven let's see we have seven by skipping two uh skipping to one two three four five six seven perfect yeah so then this would be 2000 2000 oops 2002 2004 2006 2008 up to where does this go to 2010 and 2012 so the year is easy but this is where i would lose some students you know like how do you put these types of numbers in you just have to be as simple as you can but you what you're not gonna do and i've said this in previous um videos you're not gonna just put these numbers on the graph the way it is you're gonna have 2.25s okay you're not gonna go you're not gonna do you're not gonna do oh oh let me erase this for you you're not going to do, oh, this is 0.25, and this is 0.25, and this is 0.4, and this is 0.6. And then you have a teeny tiny graph here because you stopped here. No, you have to make sure that you end up here, making sure that your graph is nice and large, and you have to make a scale. You have to make a scale, okay? So... As we can see here, we have decimals 0 0.2, 5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Point, okay, so we can go by, and this is always zero, we can go by 0 0.2, okay? So we're going to skip one, and then here, 0 0.2. Let me make this bigger so you can see. 0 0.4, 0 0.6. 1.8, 1 1.0, okay? So you have your years, which I partially erased, and then you have your proper scale that ended all the way up here. And notice how if I decided that I'm skipping two, I am always gonna skip two, skip two, okay? Let me just um, make this a little clearer. So that you can see here, let me increase this. This is always zero. See how I skipped two here? Your next number should have two. Skip two, skip two, skip two. Some of you are like, we know, but when I tell you when I grade these, so many students mess up here. But as long as you have something that works, a scale that works here for you, a scale, this scale should be perfect and your graph looks correct, you, you should get the point, okay? But anyways, let, let's take a look and see if we can actually answer number 48 without having the graph in front of us. Because sometimes you don't need the graph to answer these questions. Warmer climatic temperatures are one of the reasons for the increase in the pine beetle population. State one action that humans can take to help reduce the, this warming trend. So they're talking about um, global warming. Global warming. Global warming is the increase of greenhouse gases. And then our temperature on Earth is getting higher and higher, which is affecting all of the natural processes that happen on Earth. Global warming is not good. So one of the things that you learned in class that humans can do to reduce the gases, but you're thinking to yourself, what gases are you talking about? Carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2 is made from pollution. How can we reduce carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? One of the things humans can do is to um, use electric cars, reduce the use of fossil fuels, And what are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels is like burning coal, burning coal to make um, energy. The burning of the coal produces carbon dioxide and that's pollution in the atmosphere. 
using electric cars that do not burn gasoline. When you burn gasoline and that gas comes out of the car, that gas has carbon dioxide and it increases um, the levels of carbon dioxide, which will then increase the effects of global warming. I gave two answers here. You only needed to give one. So we were able to answer number 48 um, without having to look at the graph. Okay, let's keep going. The enzyme. I have a really good video from June's uh, videos, June's exam, about enzymes that I really emphasize on enzymes. So again, I really encourage you to look at all of my videos if you are here studying for the August exam. So let's take a look at number 51, since students want me to just do the short responses. Explain why the extra segment prevents pepsino pepsinogen from interacting with food proteins. Okay, so here we have, I know that I will always want you to read this, but this specific question does not, we can just look at the diagram. And remember what I said about diagrams? Look and see first, what are you looking at? before you answer any questions. Okay, so this is obviously a picture of enzyme, of an enzyme, okay? So this is an enzyme with an extra segment in it, and this is an extra segment. This seems to be the same exact enzyme, and it, it, is, it does not have the segment in it. So this one has, this one is called an active pepsin, so this enzyme works, inactive pepsin this one does not work and when we learned about enzymes from my previous videos and you in class in your summer classes if you have something preventing um if you have something blocking what's called the active site this is the active site this one's free it will not work this does not work whatsoever this enzyme does not work now, enzymes, remember, can either make something new or break up a, a large molecule into smaller pieces. How can this enzyme do its job when it has something blocking it? So let me make something that would have probably fit here. So this would have been a molecule that would have fit into this um, enzyme perfectly and then the reaction would have happened. But it's not gonna happen because something, because it's blocked. So this cannot go in there because it's blocked, okay? This can definitely go in here because the active site is ready to go. The active site is clear and it can lock and key right in the active site. Okay, so let's take a look at the question again. Explain why the extra segment prevents pepsinogen from interacting uh, with food proteins. Okay. The extra segment prevents pepsinogen from interacting because you can say two things. One thing that you can say, the shape is not the same, or the one that I prefer, the active site is blocked, period, okay? I prefer you give this one because that's what we're seeing here, but if you were to mention the shape is not the same, that would give you the point as well because enzymes have to have the correct shape in order for them to work. That cannot change. Okay, let's keep going.